Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself and the co-founder, executive vice president and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society dedicated to the unmet needs of the CLL community. And I'm going to be presenting some research uh, to you that I think is pretty important, a pretty big study. It's venetoclax obinutuzumab for previously untreated or treatment naive chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Six years results of the randomized CLL14 study. Um, this uh, research was presented by Dr. Othman al Sawa, who led a large international consortium, and he presented the results at the European Hematological Association's annual congress that was held in Frankfurt in 2023. In the way of a little background here, the German CLL study group has done large, lengthy, and important studies that have changed our fundamental understanding of how to best care for CLL patients. And CLL14 is one of their important trials. So in the way of background, one year fixed duration venetoclax obinutuzumab is a standard treatment for patients with treatment naive, frontline chronic lymphocytic leukemia. The CLL14 study had previously demonstrated, and that research has been presented at um, major hematology conferences and cancer conferences in the past years. It had shown very high efficacy and tolerability of this combination in patients with CLL and other coexisting conditions. This is an ongoing trial and here we have the opportunity to look at long-term outcomes of patients long after the end of therapy. So that's what's so exciting about this. Let's look at the methods and participants in this study. The aim of this study was to provide updated efficacy and safety data from the ongoing follow-up of CLL14 studies. All patients have now been off that treatment in that study for at least five years or longer. Patients with untreated CLL and coexisting conditions were randomized one to one to either 12 cycles of venetoclax and six cycles of obinutuzumab or 12 cycles of chlorambucil with six cycles of obinutuzumab. Today, using a comparator like chlorambucil with six cycles of obinutuzumab, even though that's an approved therapy, would no longer be ethical because this and other research has proved the superiority of venetoclax and obinutuzumab over chlorambucil and obinutuzumab. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival. Secondary issues that were looked at were safety, rates of measurable residual disease, time to next treatment, and overall survival. And as I said, this research is ongoing. So let's look at these results. It was a big study. 432 patients, 216 were randomized to receive venetoclax obinutuzumab, 216 chlorambucil and obinutuzumab. The medium follow-up uh, being presented is 76.4 months. No surprise here, progression-free survival was superior for the Venn-based therapy, 76 months versus 36 months. Uh, at six years after randomization, the estimated progression-free survival was 53% uh, 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 percent, uh, after Ven obinutuzumab and 21% after chlorambucil obinutuzumab. Progressive disease occurred in 67 of the Ven obinutuzumab arm with 39 uh, second-line treatment uh, initiations, but it occurred in 141 so almost double the number of chlorambucil obinutuzumab uh, uh, in that arm, with 103 of those beginning second-line therapies. Time to next treatment was much longer in the Ven-based therapy. Uh, six year um, uh, was much longer in the Ven-based therapy. In both arms, the most frequent second-line therapies was BTK inhibitors. The progress the Progression-free survival and time to next treatment between the two arms was maintained over all risk groups, including high-risk groups like those with the 
TP53 mutation or deletion in those with unmutated IGVH status. When they did a deeper analysis called the multivariate analysis, they identified that TP53 deletion and mutation, unmutated IGVH, in lymph node size greater than 5 centimeters, in other words, bulky nodes, were independent risk factors for progression-free survival in the patients treated with venetoclax and albinutuzumab. Five years after treatment completion, 17 or 7.9% um, in the venetoclax obinutuzumab arm still were undetectable MRD. 22 had low levels of MRD, that's between greater than 1 in 10,000 cells but less than 1 in 100 uh, cells, and 23% had more than 1 in 100 cells. Overall, there were 48 deaths in the Ven obinutuzumab arm. Nine were progressive disease related, and 70 in the chlorambucil obinutuzumab, 26 were progressive disease related. At six years, overall survival was 78.7% in the Ven obinutuzumab arm versus 69.2% in the chlorambucil obinutuzumab arm. Second cancers is a big issue for CLL patients and they were reported in 30 in the Ven obinutuzumab arm and 18 in the chlor obinutuzumab arm. Cumulative incidence um, after six years um, of these second cancers were 14% in Ven-based therapy versus 8.5%. There were two Richter transformations in those taking venetoclax and four in those taking chlorambucil. No new safety uh, signals were discovered. So what can we conclude? This is pretty exciting. This data confirms a long-term progression-free survival benefit of venetoclax obinutuzumab, you know, just a simple short therapy fixed duration compared to chlorambucil obinutuzumab, including all patients with high-risk uh, CLL. Five years or greater after completing their therapy, being drug-free, over half of the patients remained in remission and over 60% had not required second-line treatment. Reaching UMRD improved outcomes in T53 mutations, unmutated IGVH, and enlarged lymph nodes greater than 5 centimeters decreased your chances of not progressing. In summary, this one-year fixed duration venetoclax obinutuzumab regimen is an effective option for patients with CLL and coexisting conditions who can enjoy a long period of disease control after a short period of treatment. On the CLL Society website, we offer a link to the tr trial, um, venetoclax obinutuzumab for previously untreated chronic lymphocytic leukemia, six-year results from the randomized CLL14 study. If you want to dig deeper, into this paper uh, and its details that were presented at the European Hematological Association uh, annual meeting in 2023. Thanks so much for your attention. Stay strong. We are all in this together.